What's up, boys and girls? Uh, this is Sean, aka High Roller 1969. Today, what I would like to show you guys is how to easily find the center of it, just about any kind of vehicle out there. And I'm also going to show you how to lay down some perfectly flawless stripes. Uh, it's going to be a quick demo. I'm not going to do the whole entire car on video because I do have to work here, so um, I'm not going to, you know, spend all my time making a video. But anyways, so I will show you what's going on here and uh, the vehicle we are working on and then we'll show you the finished product at the end of the video so I hope that you guys enjoy it and uh, let's get to work this vehicle here is a Dodge Charger and personally I feel that this is one of the easiest cars to stripe um, however though I'm still gonna show you guys a little bit of uh, tricks of the trade here or whatever uh, finding the center of the vehicle here uh, was not at all challenging in fact it was quite easy uh, pretty much you have uh, the antenna line on your back window now not every single antenna line that looks like it's centered is going to be hundred and ten percent centered but however uh, I know that this is centered because if you look at it uh, you can see that it runs right through the center of the seat right through the center console the center of the radio however just to double check it's always good just to throw out a measurement all right you're going to measure from the same point to the same point. Uh, 25 and a half there. Okay. And same point to same point. Well, we're down here. 25 and a half there as well. So therefore, now I know that this is true, that the center of the, uh, the rear window mask um, is, the, uh, is the center point of the car. Now... On a lot of vehicles, it is the, the antenna mask for the radio. Uh, a lot of other vehicles, this is uh, the rear defrost mask, whatever you want to call it there. So, uh, so now we already know that that is the center of our vehicle. So therefore, I put a dot right here with a, with a little marker. Uh, make sure it's an erasable marker. You don't just want to be throwing dots on people's cars. So just remember that. Uh, then from that center mark over here... Right back here in a tail light. Let me move you guys down so you can see a little bit better. There we go. Right in the metal point here of the tail light, there is a little tiny dot on the Dodge Chargers. Actually, a lot of vehicles have those little dots there. That's to mark the center point of your vehicle. Uh, from there, pretty much up to there, center of the vehicle, make your little mark there. Now, what I do after that is I want to measure out two inches. Okay. On each side. So if you're anybody that's smart with a tape measure, you don't have to do from the point there to the point there. You could just set it at four. You know, go two over there, go six over there. You know, it's really easy. Long, long story short is I want to have a four-inch separation gap on my on my stripes here. Here's a little hint for professionalism, gentlemen. Never ever just throw your stuff on a car. Okay, you want to be gentle with it. If you have to use the car as a bench, go right ahead. That's fine, but just don't throw it all over the place. You know, the worst thing on this car I have right now is my lighter, but I'm not trying to scratch the car with it. I set it down easily. This right here is not really going to scratch your car at all. Some tape. Uh, just make sure that the if you have a water your water jug, you want to use that. Set it down. Just make sure that's clean. But however, uh, this right here could scratch the car because uh, a tape measure does get dirty, it collects a lot of dirt. Uh, you take that dirt, you start throwing it on paint, it's gonna start scratching, so therefore I put that down just to uh, you know cushion that up a little bit. All right, so now let's just uh, get back to work here. So the first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna make sure to get this down perfectly straight right where we want it. Make sure that you have a little bit of an overhang on the back side here. That way you don't come up too short on anything. So don't be afraid to overlap the back side just, just a little bit. Okay. Now don't forget, I'm using those alignment marks that I have already put down. Now what I like to do is I like to do the hinge, the hinge method. Show you what that is for anybody who doesn't know 
the hinge method is. You lay it on a piece of tape over here. Okay, we're gonna flip this. We're gonna use the tape as a hinge. We're gonna flip that up. We're gonna rip the paper off. We're not gonna cut it. We're gonna rip it off. Um, if you don't feel comfortable ripping it off, then I would suggest cutting it with the scissors. Uh, just make make sure not to touch the uh, the paint of the vehicle because you don't want to scratch it up. Do not use a razor blade to cut the paper. Uh, if you if you do use the razor blade, you run on, you run into risk of actually cutting into the paint. You don't want to do that. We uh, we live up here in the northeast, and uh, any types of breaks in the paint does lead to rust without without question. So what I just did right here is uh, wipe down the paper, make sure that the paper's clean, your surface is clean. Make sure you do your surface your surface prep, wipe it down with alcohol, uh, maybe a wax and grease remover, whatever solvents you're using. Um, I personally would just stick with alcohol because that's been working for me for years. That's my recommendations. Don't use Windex because Windex actually contains um, a little bit of silicone inside of the, uh, the base of what makes Windex, and that does leave a little bit of an oily substance. The other thing is too, is you don't want to put your bare fingers, because your fingers have oils too, you don't want to put your bare fingers onto the vinyl. But however, I'm going to here because I have this much of an overlap, I have, you know, a good uh, inch and a half over here, a good two inches over here of overlap. So that's the only time that you're allowed to touch the vinyl with your bare fingers. Because once again, the oil is on your hands, they will, um, they will create um, just a, a little bit of a bad pocket of um, of oil underneath the material here, and you don't want to do that. Okay, we're gonna toss that aside. The next thing, we're just gonna lightly brush our hand over the top of it, lightly. Okay, just to make sure that. Everything is good, everything is clean. In fact, I'm going to wipe it down a little just to make sure that there's nothing underneath. We're going to give it all a spritz. Nothing special, this is just uh, water and uh, oh, just soapy water. Okay, we'll take our vinyl here lay it down nicely making sure that our vinyl is right where we want it right onto the uh, alignment marks okay squeegee from the inside out get all that water out I'm not gonna say get as much as you can out I'm gonna tell you get all the water out because if you don't dry it up a little bit if you don't then uh, about a year or so down the road, this uh, soapy water is going to want to escape from this. And if you have your vinyl down correctly and you know that you did a good job, where is it going to escape to? Well, what it's going to do is uh, it'll start cracking. Oh, we got an emergency. That's what that noise is. All right. Dry this up over here too. Okay. Now, I'm going to peel back my hinge tape, my helper tape, and when you do that, keep it flat against the surface. See how I'm peeling that up? Yeah, you want to keep that flat. You could save it for the next piece, but I am high roller. Now this, you're going to flip back over, yet again, you're going to make sure you are clean through here. Okay, make sure your paper's uh, somewhat clean, that way you don't get any debris in there. I'm gonna peel the paper back off the sticker. Do not peel the other way. What I mean by that is don't try to peel the sticker off the paper. You wanna peel the paper off the sticker, if that makes any sense to you. All right, give it a little spritzer. Okay. Fold that up there. You want to drag your squeegee. You hardly ever want to push your squeegee. You always want to try to drag your squeegee, not push it. Okay. 
Pretty good. Now here's a little trick. Try to make sure everything is off and out. Okay, now here's a little trick that you won't you won't see this on how-to videos, but here's a little trick. I use Apple tape. It's not a very expensive tape because I figure what the hell is the sense of having a very expensive tape? I'm just gonna use it once, take it off, and throw it away. Now, Apple tape, when you spray the back side or the outside of the paper, a little bit of massage, what that does is that actually softens up the glue uh, on the back side here. Okay. Well, don't worry about that, something fell off the car. Uh, making it just a little bit easier to, uh, to peel off. Now, you can see how it got transparent. It got very transparent. That's what you want. That's what we're going for. Now from there, peel the tape off very carefully and slowly. Make sure to keep your tape down on the vehicle or with whatever substrate you're working on because you don't want your sticker, your decal to, uh, to lift off the vehicle. Just throw that away. You see how I'm pulling it down? I'm keeping the tape itself, this part right here, I'm not pulling up. You don't want to pull up. You want to keep it down, down on the vehicle. That way you're not pulling the vinyl up. Very good. That looks good. Okay. Now to avoid scratches, I wrap a uh, little piece of um, paper towel around my squeegee just to avoid scratches and any bubbles that you see now is the time to get them out all right this looks really good Very nice. Dry her up a little bit. Okay. Not going to worry too much about that just yet. Now, on the next segment, is we need to do our trimming. So let me go find my razor blade, and I'll trim this up for you guys. Show you how that's done. Now, I've been doing vinyls for about 15 years now. There's one thing I've learned about vinyl. Don't be afraid of it. Another thing I've learned too, always have a fresh, clean razor blade, brand new. Buy the razor blades at like, I don't know, six bucks a box for a hundred of them. Buy as many as you can. Seriously. If you plan on doing this, plan on having a fresh razor. Now what I'm doing on the back here is I'm not pushing into the paint at all. But what I'm doing is I'm, keep, I'm gonna put the razor blade flat against the, uh, the outside of the panel here and I'm just very lightly gonna drag. Just to get our trimmings. Trimmings, I make it sound like it's a Thanksgiving dinner. All right. Now this is the the, uh, the pain in the ass part for a lot of people, but however, like I said, I've been doing it for a long time, so this is where the skill is going to come in. I need to trim this piece off right here because we're only we're only going to have our vinyl stop right here, just like this piece over here that you see. So. I'm going to show you how we do that. Make sure your vinyl is down good. Make sure you got no bubbles in it. Okay. Your best bet is to lay the vinyl down. Just like I have it over here. The reason why that is, if this right here starts to pick up as you're cutting it, 
You're going to have jagged edges. It's not going to look good. You want a smooth, clean, straight cut. If you're unskilled to do this, then I suggest maybe laying down a piece of tape over it, uh, using your tape as a guide. However, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm going to use my thumb as a guide. All right. I'm not, here's another thing too, before I even get this into here. I'm not pushing down on the vinyl. Pretty much what I'm doing is I'm just scratching the top layer of the vinyl. I'll peel the vinyl off, it'll rip itself, but it'll be really smooth. You don't want to apply pressure when you have a brand new razor blade because you definitely will, without a doubt, cut into your paint. And like I said, you cut into your paint, that's what uh, causes uh, paint chips, rust, uh, corrosion, everything else. So. Like I said, it just, you just got to be good at it. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it one spray, just across the top there. The reason why I just did that, is I want my thumb to slide along here without rippling up the paper too much. So I'm using that spray as a lubricant for my thumb. I'm going to take the razor blade, I'm going to push it up against my thumb, and that's how I'm going to make my cut here. I'm going to use my thumb here to push against the vehicle, well, against the material here. I'm going to use this as a guide. And like I said, just ever so gently, you want to pretty much scratch that material. You don't want to go crazy with it. You know what, I'm going to go from the other side because I'm better with the other direction here. I'm going to get you guys a little bit closer to the action, too. And before I, before I cut this one, I'm going to cut this one right here, actually. Wonderful. Okay. Now, like I said, you do not cut into the paint very very lightly let the blade the weight of the blade itself cut into the vinyl and just give it a little bit of a scratch and as you can tell as I started to do it uh, it started to come right off real nice so do not worry about pressure you're not gonna pressurize it or you're not gonna pressurize Jesus Gotta go a little bit deeper. Come on. There we go. Okay. There. That looks amazing. All right. Oh, got my lighter. Okay, boys and girls. Now I'll show you here uh, the next step, which is uh, just because we got it on doesn't mean we're finished here. Uh, we actually still have a lot of work to do. Uh, well, not a lot of work, but uh, what we have to do is we have to roll these edges over here with heat, and we have to make sure that these edges right over here get a little bit softer, a little bit cleaner, and, uh, and then we'll wipe it down, and then we'll be done. We're just gonna heat up just the edges, just a little. Make sure our heat guns are. Right, yep, we're good. Make sure we're up the temperature. Just want to heat those edges just a little bit. Do not overheat it. You don't want to overheat and mess up your vinyl and all that hard work. Okay. Beautiful. On the back, same thing. Like I said, not much heat. Do that 
that with a heat gun, not with a hair dryer. All right. So this is what the back of the car looks like here. Oh, sorry. Don't want to get anybody all motion sickness or whatever, but that's what the back of our flames look like. And uh, don't forget to do a nice cleanup. Let them sit for a few minutes. Uh, that little bit of heat that you use will help dry them up. But just, just let it sit for a few minutes and then uh, come back to it, wipe it down, do a nice little cleanup. I'll take you over to the front. I'll show you what we have going on in the front of the vehicle. These are nice. I really like the way these came out. There. And then I'm going to do the top. And we're going to do a rear window sticker on it as well. And I will come back to you guys and show you the, uh, the end result of all that. Alright, so now we, uh, we got the car all vinyled up now. We have our beautiful racing stripes on. Looking nice. We have the roof done. And we also did a uh, back window for her. Little uh, Dodge logo here. Wow. More like a badass Ram logo. Now the last thing that I want to do, just to keep it professional, uh, I like to go one step above and beyond what the customer's expectations are. I'm going to give this car a little bath right now. At least, uh, at least a rinse off is what she deserves. So, take care of any soap scum or suds that still may be on the vehicle. Luckily for us, it's a cloudy day, so we don't have to be fully in the shade because right now there is no sun. So, all right, let's give her a bath. in a car, save the rims and tires for last, because your sponge is going to get dirty as hell. You don't want to spread that dirt over the vehicle, so keep that in mind. Like I said, guys, just a uh, just a courtesy wash for the customer. Uh, nothing really expected out of the business to do, but it's always good just to go that extra mile for them to keep them happy and satisfied and show them that you care about their car just as much as they do. So that little washing was not a perfect wash, but it was just something nice to do for the customer. And uh, that's how you lay down the stripes. Not really that much to it. It's not, not as hard as what everybody makes it out to be, so... Alright guys, I am Sean, aka Hi Roller 1969 Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on my video, and share it if you learned anything. Hopefully it does. But uh, anyways, till next time guys, peace.